Welcome to the Catalyst Sale Podcast. Many of us struggle with sales. This could be due to a lack of confidence, comfort, just not wanting to be salesy. We want to help our customers. We know we can, but we complicate the process. This podcast is designed to help folks like you improve at sales through process, practice, framework, and thinking. I'm Mike Simmons. I'm the founder of Catalyst Sale, and I'm really excited to have Tanner Brock, founder of 9to5, 5to9 Coaching, on the podcast today. We have a pretty cool announcement to make. Tanner, thanks for being here. I'm excited to be here, Mike. Thanks for having me on. What did we go through a little bit earlier today? You and I went through my onboarding to work with Catalyst Cell today. Pretty exciting stuff. What did you think of the onboarding? It was quick. It was efficient. I, I think one of the big things, uh, all playful joking aside, there was extreme clarity in the onboarding. Um, I think one of the problems we have is we like to get the long-winded about stuff or things we think are important. And really, if we get to the core of why it's important, you don't have to go on forever about it. And, and that's what I found with the onboarding we did today, Mike. When you're going through it, you just made things very clear. I think one of the first things you did really well at is you started with the question of, okay, what problems are we here to solve? And then we broke it down, right? We talked about, uh, you know, revenue generation, execution, confidence, how do we sell, um, provide solutions for that. And, and I think if people can really just get down to that, it trims a lot of the uh, fat of conversations away. Now, this was a little bit easier for us though, because we've known each other for a while. Uh, yeah. We met, we first actually met in person at uh, Lee and Jody's mastermind uh, in Orlando earlier this year. And it seems like it was an eternity ago. A lot of stuff's happened since then. And we've been talking some, you know, a couple of times a week, uh, for an extended period now, uh, as you've gone through different uh, transitions. So you've launched nine to five, five to nine coaching. Can you share a little bit about what that is and why that's important to you? Yeah. So nine to five, five to nine coaching first, where the name came from um, when I was a warehouse manager, probably three years ago, three and a half years ago, I was given the opportunity to do a few leadership trainings in the organization I worked for. It was a small organization and the saying I came up with is that we are leaders um, eight to five, five to eight. And um, I didn't think that sounded catchy enough. So I switched it to nine to five, five to nine. But really there's this core belief that I have, regardless of title, you're a leader at work and you're a leader at home and you have to be at your best all the time. And so nine to five, five to nine coaching is honing in on the nine to five, specifically when it comes to leadership and culture development. Because what I've had in my professional experience is I've had leaders around me who were really great at building strong cultures. And I saw the impact it had on me at home and that, you know, if it was a good day at work, it was, it was a great day at home. And then I've been in organizations where I've been around leaders with poor culture and it had a really negative impact on me um, at home as well. And there's not this definitive line when people say, you know, this work life balance, it's just one life. You know, it, that's what it's all about. And so nine to five, five to nine coaching really hones in on helping organizations have strong leaders and strong cultures so people can have really strong five to nines. And that's, that's the focus of what nine to five, five to nine coaching is about. So I hear coaching, I hear leadership, I hear culture. I didn't hear anything about sales. What's your, what's the extent of your sales experience? Traditional sales experience, none, zero. What about non-traditional sales experience? Years. How Years. so? Uh, I look back at my roles I've had, you know, from a warehouse manager, had to work with vendors, pricing, negotiation there, uh, you know, working with different uh, freight operators, UPS, FedEx, negotiating things there. You know, I had to sell what we were trying to do and get right prices. I've had roles as a leadership and development coach. And when you're trying to help a group of people change their behave behaviors and you're trying to sell them new behaviors. It's a sales role because you're really trying to say, we have to change what you're doing. Um, and then I look at my, my last role that was, you know, in a typical nine to five role, it was a culture coordinator. And in that position, I was working with executives, managers, frontline individuals, an entire organization on trying to sell them a, a new mindset, a better way to build a culture and why that was important. So lots of non-traditional sales experience and, and building relationships and, and helping people see problems and solutions. But I guess quote traditional, there's, there's none, Mike. So how are we going to, how are we going to improve that? How are we going to, how are we going to cover that gap on 
the traditional sales experience side of things? By learning and selling catalyst cell material. So Tanner is going to come on as a, uh, in a freelance role as an account executive, and he's going to sell uh, the catalyst sale courses um, focused primarily on small teams uh, inside organizations. And I'm really excited about it. It does, uh, it does a couple of things for me. One, it improves our capability and capacity as an organization. Um, he'll be able to focus on things that I just quite frankly don't have the time uh, to focus on. He's going to be a force multiplier inside the organization. We're also going to go through the process of actually doing the work, you know, applying a lot of the concepts that we talk about on the podcast, that I talk about in the courses, the share the frameworks, we share in blog posts and demonstrate how that work is put into practice. So one of the other things that we're going to do is on a, I think we're going to I think the cadence is going to be once a month. We'll kind of see how this goes, but we'll do an update podcast like this where Tanner will come on and share his experience lessons learned um, stories that he's been able to generate success that he's had or failures. And you know, we might figure out that we just have a complete lack of product market fit, or we don't understand the market or um, we've already realized that somebody else is out there solving this better than we can. There's a number of lessons that we're going to learn through this process by having a member of the direct sales team going out there and working with clients directly. What are you excited about Tanner? I, th I think what I'm most excited about um, is to apply the skills and knowledge I have from the non-traditional building relationships, uh, communicating with people. I th but ultimately I think what it comes down to is I've been through some of the catalyst cell material before I've applied it with, you know, my podcast that I've done, I'm applying it with, building nine to five, five to nine coaching. And for me, it, it works and it makes sense. And what I'm excited about is giving the information, sharing with other people that might think I can't do the sell thing, or I don't know how to grow anything. And I don't know where to start providing them the tools and frameworks where they can begin to provide their solutions to other people. And, you know, everyone wins that way. And uh, so I'd like to share a little bit about a uh, conversation we had earlier. And I'm not going to get into the beaver story that Tanner shared with me. If you'd like to learn more about that, send him a direct message on Twitter or LinkedIn and he can, he can, he can give you the background. But when we started, one of the first questions I asked Tanner is I said, what problem do we solve? What problem do we solve? And how'd you answer that? The way you answered it, not, the actual answer, but how did, how did you answer the, what problem do we solve? Oh, my, my answer was, uh, we help people find what the problem and then get to the solution. That was my first answer. So he's talking about connecting the dots between the problem and the solution, which is what sales is. And you know, we, we've talked about that broadly on the podcast. And then next he started getting into feature functionality product stuff. Like he said, well, we demystify sales, we deliver courses, we do these things. And I think that's a common challenge that a lot of us run into when we think about problems that we're solving in the marketplace. We think about it from the perspective of us as an organization, not necessarily the actual problem that exists in the marketplace. And I know that for some of you, this sounds really basic and simple, but I can tell you that over and over again, Folks, when you ask this question, what problem do we solve? We get into some jargon around how we solve the problem, not what the actual problem is that exists in the marketplace. And the problems that we had identified as we put this up on the whiteboard were uh, revenue generation. So helping people generate revenue. And that could either be uh, speed to revenue. It could be building scale. Uh, it can be building predictability. It can be building consistency. We talked about execution uh, helping people execute through uh, clarity and focus. And then the other problem that we talked about solving is confidence. How do we build confidence, help people build confidence when it comes to sales? So as we go through this, I hope you guys enjoy, I hope everybody out there who's listening enjoys the, the documenting of the journey and Tanner's experience. I'm really excited about it because we've got someone, Tanner, who doesn't have a traditional background in sales, who's going to be selling a sales oriented product inside organizations. And I expect he's going to learn a lot as we go through the process and look forward to how we share uh, that with everybody out there. The thing I'll ask you to do is if you have specific questions, if you have um, a specific topic you'd like us to get into, how we overcame 
a certain item or how we addressed uh, a certain challenge, please let us know. Tanner, where can people find you on Twitter? You can find me on Twitter. It's Tanner C. Brock on Twitter. So at Tanner C. Brock. Awesome. And I am Simmons underscore M on Twitter. Everything else is at catalystsale.com is the website. And you can find all the links there. Tanner, I'm really excited about this. I'm excited to share this journey with folks. I'm excited just to hear the feedback uh, from uh, the community out there. I'm excited to hear your feedback and uh, I'm excited to see us uh, hit on uh, our number one objective, which is what? Our number one objective. I have it highlighted right here is make money. Yeah. Generating revenue. That's actually how we're going to measure it. So, I mean, our big, our big objective here is help people solve problems. We're going to help people solve problems, which is going to lead into uh, making revenue, making money. And you know, as we go through this, and I'm setting Tanner up here with that question, but one of the things that we did is we said, how are we going to measure success? We'll measure success by the revenue that we generate behind generating revenue, one of the first things we've got to do is we actually have to engage with people. We have to have conversations with folks. So if we aren't engaging with folks, if we aren't having conversations, it's going to be really hard for us to generate revenue. In order to have conversations with folks, we actually have to identify them first. So we identify folks, we engage with them, we establish objectives, we clarify next steps, we call them to action. And ideally, if we are delivering the right product to the market to address a solution or a problem that people are struggling with solving in the market, uh, we will be able to be fairly compensated uh, for helping people do that. So I'm excited to share this. Tanner, anything else you'd like to share with the audience before we wrap up? I'm just excited to get going on it. And, uh, you know, from my personal experience going through the material, not ever having had sales training before, to me, the, the content, the concepts, are extremely clear and easy to pick up on. And, you know, the biggest part of it is executing on it. I, you know, I look at my podcast and I've used so many of the frameworks and designing my show to make it better. And I've noticed an upward trend and tick in how the show's going. And there's certain episodes where frameworks were applied and they get a lot of downloads. And then there's ones where I lack in that. And, you know, the numbers show that the frameworks work even on a podcast where you're trying to sell a message. So I'm excited to help other people apply these tools. You can absolutely design for success. And I know both of us are Covey fans. You know, we begin with the end in mind. You take a design oriented approach to uh, creating success and, and that will help you with better execution. If you know somebody who'd benefit from hearing this discussion, please share it with them and let us know via Twitter or LinkedIn. I'd like to hear how you're applying uh, some of the concepts discussed. We talked about connecting the dots between problem and solution today. We talked about working backwards from generating revenue. I'd like to hear how you're applying those concepts in your role uh, today. Sales is a thinking process. How are you thinking differently about your process? 